I just finished playing two sets in the middle of the day in the heat and I am dead I'm dead but I love doing it because it feels very rewarding afterwards I feel like tennis it reveals your character it doesn't build your character it reveals your character whether you can make it through difficult times or not some people can't and their tennis reflects that so tennis reveals character it doesn't necessarily build character and that's why I love it but I came to the conclusion that even though I love this game so much I devoted my whole life to this game I came to the conclusion that tennis is really unhealthy okay I'm gonna read you something which you're gonna recognize what it is once you start reading it so I'm gonna start listing injuries of a specific player on tour 2007 right forearm 2014 right wrist 2006 left shoulder 2006 2014 back 2009 2018 2022 abdomen 2018 right hip 2011 left thigh 2004 2005 2006 left foot 2015 right ankle 2009 2012 left knee 2008 2009 2010 2017 2018 right knee 2007 2009 right tie 2016 left wrist 2003 left elbow I'm sure you know who I'm talking about I'm talking about Rafa now can you imagine any type of profession where you can sustain this many injuries now look guys I know there's other sports that are unhealthy as well that will cause you to get hurt like football or boxing wrestling you name it there's other sports that are tough too I'm not gonna make tennis out to be the only sport that's so bad for your body but the way tennis is played is what makes, makes it so tough first of all let's understand what you have to do if you play tennis at the elite level you basically have to cover the court you have to sprint and change directions at an incredibly fast speed and let's not forget that you have to utilize all your mechanics, all your strokes in order to win the point. From a mental standpoint, there's a lot of pressure and that takes a toll on players as well. And you put all that together and the way the tennis scoring works, you might be out there for four, five, six, seven hours or 11 hours in the case of John at Wimbledon. So that's not all guys. It doesn't mean that it's all over after you let's say win a match of that caliber now you might have to come back the same day and play doubles or you might have to come back the next day and play again and once that tournament is over now you might get a week off but then you got another tournament and that goes on the whole year and that goes on the whole career but many people conveniently forget that all these players that you see on TV played a tremendous amount of tennis in juniors as well they all started very young and they're all ex with the exception of a few like Venus and Serena played a tremendous amount of junior matches as well so you're talking about at least 20 years in some cases 30 years of playing one tennis match after the other see I'm recuperated now I'm ready to stand up I regain my composure so I talk about the fact that you have to play so many matches and that in itself makes tennis extremely unhealthy where you're testing your body to the max if you play tennis at the elite level and that takes a toll and injuries are normal every player that you can think of was injured it's not only Rafa maybe because of his sometimes defensive style where he has a tendency to play far behind the baseline he covers the court tremendously well he gets injured maybe more than some other players maybe some of this stuff is genetic but if you take a look at Djokovic, Federer, Murray those guys get injured as well everyone at the elite level gets injured it is definitely part of elite tennis now how about someone like myself who wasn't an elite player I was a college player I played uh, the prize money club system in Europe and you guys might think that it's a lot easier on the body when you play that level but I can tell you that actually it sometimes can be worse because we don't have the luxury at that level to make a lot of money we make some money but it's more just to pay expenses and to be able to play tournaments 
So we can't hire physios, so we can't f hire these people who can help us recuperate more. And it's not only that, we also uh, are forced to play two, three matches per day. So let me just tell you what my year would look like when I played college tennis. So I would play college tennis in the fall season and in the spring season. Now in the summertime, I would go to Germany and play club matches. And this would usually go on for six weeks. And on the rest of the time, I would use to play prize money tournaments. So in a particular year, I would play at least 100 matches, if not more. And guys, that's only singles. See, at that level, you got to play everything. You got to play singles and doubles, especially if you're playing college tennis and if you're playing the club system for money in Europe. You're going to play singles and doubles on the same day. So you can double that number and the amount of times I would play doubles within a specific year. So naturally, after all this time, after playing all these matches, my body is completely destroyed. I got a pretty wrecked shoulder, I got a really bad ankle, and I got a pretty destroyed left knee and a right knee that's starting to get that way as well. So for that reason, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that tennis is an extremely unhealthy sport if you play it at the high level. But the important question is, and this is probably what you're wondering if you clicked on this video, how about the recreational level? Well, here is going to be completely different. Here, tennis is going to be a super healthy activity to participate in. Well, why do I say that? Well, you don't have to play the hundreds or thousands of matches that are going to eventually destroy your body. You're going to play some matches where you won't play it at that high level. The, speed of the ball is going to be slower and you're going to have more time to get to the ball and your body is not going to get tested anywhere near it gets tested at the high level this is true for singles and it's especially true for doubles where you have to cover only half of the court so naturally if you play tennis it's going to be a super healthy exercise to do for players of all ages here's the thing though i am a super competitive person and if you are my students, I'm going to be competitive for you because I want you to get as good as you can possibly get. I want you to get to the 5.0 level. And you can only get there by grinding, which means that you're going to try to play as much tennis as possible and you're going to try to play as many matches as possible as well. So let's just say, for example, that you have plenty of time and plenty of money and you decide to play tennis two, three hours a day every day what will naturally happen is that you are going to overuse your body it's naturally gonna go wrong here and there you're gonna get some nagging injuries because of over usage and that is just something that tennis players have to deal with you're gonna have to be patient when you get injured the type of therapies that are available when you are injured have improved tremendously and it's gonna allow you to get back onto the tennis court fully recovered much faster than in the past. I can tell you that at the high level, dealing with injuries is something that is normal. It is something that every player has to deal with. And if it happens to be you at the recreational level, you're gonna have to have the same patience that we have. Don't get frustrated, don't give up on tennis. Take your time, utilize all the things that you can utilize in today's modern medicine and just have your eyes set for the day that you can be back on the tennis court. In the meantime, I have a video that I did with Shamir where we performed some drills on a chair inspired by Thomas Muster who got hit by a drunk driver determined to Miami and his uh, knee was completely destroyed and he made a makeshift chair where he was hitting balls out of this chair uh, during his injury. And we got so inspired by that that Shamir and I uh, redesigned some of these drills back when Shamir had a really bad foot injury so guys the reason why I made this video is to not to discourage you from playing tennis by any means I'm just letting you know honestly and truthfully that tennis is an unhealthy sport because it puts your body to the limit and you are bound to get injured I'll never forget when my dad was alive rest in peace and I would tell him that I'm planning to play some YouTube matches he said Nick are you out of your freaking mind you're gonna end up in a hospital and sometimes when I play, I'm pretty close to going to the hospital. So he's right. I shouldn't even be playing right now. It's too dangerous because my body is very unstable. And that just goes to show you that he knows from his experience in the world of tennis his whole life, he knows how dangerous tennis 
can be and he knows what type of toll uh, high level tennis takes on the body but by no means am I trying to discourage you from playing tennis because tennis at the recreational level is absolutely a healthy activity to partake in guys another thing that I want to advise you is that you try to be as trim as you possibly can be I am very interested in nutrition I do follow it as a hobby and I've read some statistics on the amount of people who are overweight in the United States and it's something like 70 percent and it's going to be 80 percent soon and a lot of these people are obese as well and what I've been able to observe is that when you're heavy obviously there's more shock on your entire body and you're going to get injured a lot more and you're probably going to be uh, forced to play doubles you will not be able to play singles especially if you're a little bit old being trim will allow you to play tennis not only longer but also pain-free